Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 8 of our FTP Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today guys, we have a lot to do, so we're just going to jump right into it. As you see, I have quite a few things pinned up here, and first thing we're going to get started with is the Pedestals mod. Now the reason we actually want to get our Pedestals up and running right away is because we're running low on Andesite Alloy. I only have 38 left, and the original recipe wasn't great, so we're going to use this recipe which requires mixing zinc and Andesite. However, I don't have Andesite on hand. I do have plenty of zinc here, but like I don't have much Andesite left. So we're going to get started with that right away. So before we can actually get into pedestals, we need to do a bit of elemental craft. Now I have pinned all the recipes up here and we got to make source gems surrounding a pure daisy. So we actually have to hop over to Batania real quick. So we can use the living rocks we got from the villagers last episode or a few episodes back. And the white rock is normally made with a quite a painful recipe. And that is, yeah, enriched peat, earth essence, uh, soul powder, and blocks of coal with run source gems. So luckily we don't have to do this. We got all of ours from the villagers and I don't mind doing that. I think it's perfectly reasonable that they the, they put it there specifically for us, right? So we actually want to grab ourselves some white petals now so we can make our pure daisy. However, I only have two here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some bone meal as well. And then I can actually duplicate these with a very simple technique of just placing white petals down and then you bone meal them and you get four. And now I have eight or sorry, 16 petals, uh, petals and then I'll duplicate these and I'll get 64. And now we have 64 petals, which will make us plenty enough white daisies. Now with my apothecary here, I'm going to place water in it and then four petals, oh, four petals and a seed and we'll get our pure daisy. And what's really nice about Botania, this has been the pack for or the mod for a very long time, is you can just reuse the same recipe used by before by just right clicking with an empty hand and then throwing your seed back in. So you don't actually have to place each petal in individually. And now we'll just make ourselves probably eight pure daisies is enough, I assume. Yeah, we'll go with eight. I think that's fine. And we'll grab ourselves some dirt because we don't have any. And we can go ahead and place these down just like so. We're going to do two apart because you need to have eight blocks surrounding each one. And we don't want them to overlap. So we'll place them eight apart just around like this. And we should be good. Now with some source gem blocks, we're just going to place these around each pure daisy to get our inert crystal blocks, which we will need for element craft. Yeah, and we'll just place all of these around. These will slowly turn into elemental craft inert blocks, and we should have plenty enough to last us for a while because each one of these will provide nine inert crystals. One thing I actually meant to set up last episode, which I forgot, is our fans. Now we had these before. I've made them a lot more compact than before. And yeah, we just have the water smoker, the haunter, and the furnace. And these guys will just provide us with everything we need. But today we actually need living rock, which you get from infested stone. And the way to get infested stone is by haunting actual stone like this, right? So we're just going to grab some stone, place it on there. And yeah, that'll give us infested stone. And now our nerd crystals are all done, so we can go ahead and collect all of those. And now we should have nine stacks. Yeah, there we go. We have nine stacks of inert crystals. That should last us for a very, very long time. And we'll have a better method of getting these later in the future. So we want to get ahead and get ourselves started with the elemental craft here. So we're going to craft up some pure crystals or whatever they're called. And we'll grab ourselves a bunch of elemental infusers, extractors, and pipes. All right, so I've gone ahead and made myself a bunch of elemental pipes, evaporators, and infusers. And these guys are going to be very, very useful for what we're about to do. We'll grab ourselves some puller and pusher upgrades. And we want to automate this immediately, which will be super useful. Go over here will work perfectly fine. So we're just going to go place down our containers. Uh, that should be good, yeah. Because we only need... Oh, no, we do need five. No, yeah, that won't work. We're going to need five total. So we'll do them one apart, I guess. Eh, yeah, this way works. Okay. We'll do four like this. And we do need a fifth one. So I guess we could put it out and yeah, we'll just put it over here i think that's fine yeah it's fine here yeah yeah you know what that'll work yeah we'll go side to side like this i was gonna go the other way but i think this will be fine so we have our 10 uh we have our 10 containers down we're gonna go ahead and connect them each with a pipe individually like this and we want to set these guys to extract so how you do that you just shift right click and it'll turn green like this and now this one is an extract you can also remove it and then just right click back here to set it back so we're going to set all of these guys to extract as these will be our source of element 
right? So we're going to go ahead and place drawers on top of each one of these elemental evaporators, right? And we're going to use our pusher upgrades in these guys to automatically place down our water, air, earth shards, everything, right, inside of them. Now we want to go ahead and grab our elemental infusers and place them on top of these guys here. And what these will do is they will act as our way of infusing elements into each item. So each item with elements, right? And so we'll just place drawers like so. And then these guys will accept anything automatically of what we grab. So we're just going to grab a bit of each shard here because we're going to need them in a second. And we want two sets of water shards. And luckily here, we have slime spawning because we're in a slime chunk. So we can go ahead and grab all of the shards we need. And now we have water shards in here. We're going to do some more water shards there because we do need two sets, like I said. And then we just need one of each for this guy. So we'll grab air, earth, and fire. And that's all the shards done. Now we'll set our locks on all of them so they don't get messed up or anything. Now we're going to go ahead and set all of our pusher upgrades in these guys, right? And they're automatically set to down, so it's pretty easy. And these guys will automatically feed into the element infusers below them, or sorry, evaporators. And I know it looks weird, but it does work. As you see here, we're getting water essence in this guy, and it's automatically setting to this one over here. And that's what we'll use for our element infuser on top. And it's basically just a buffer system so that we always have enough for our crafts. And then this guy here, we need some pillar upgrades in. And well, what we need is actually another set of drawers on top so that we can actually step items into them and then have them be pulled out. Because otherwise, what's going to happen is, well, we don't have a way to automatically put items in. So these guys now will all get pusher upgrades, which I don't have enough of. So I'm going to have to grab some more. All right, we got some more pusher upgrades here, and each one of these will be the same thing as before. They're already all set to down, so it works perfectly. We'll throw them all in there. And then for these guys in the front, we want our pusher upgrades. So we're actually facing north right now, as tell by F3. So we're going to grab all of our push pillar upgrades and set them to north. There we go. And now all of these guys will automatically pull out of the infuser once they're done crafting, which is awesome. So the first thing we actually want to do is grab some Springaline shards because these are one of the bases of most crafting and we did get some earlier, but you put amethyst above a water infuser and you get it. So we have plenty of amethyst here as these guys have been running for a long time. So we'll just chuck a bunch in there. Oh, we got to lock this. I forgot to do that. One second, pull that out. Let's take that back in. Then we can lock the drawers so we don't accidentally do the same thing as with our infusers. And if we put the puller upgrade back in, this will only pull out Springaline shards once they're done crafting. So it's very simple. One pushes in, one pulls out, and that is automatic Springaline shards so long as we have water shards. The next thing we want to do is actually make drenched steel which is steel inside of water. That's why we have the both water set up. And this will be for mana steel later on in the episode. And luckily we made steel last episode with our blast furnaces. So we'll go ahead and grab, eh, you know what? 32 is probably good for now. Place our steel inside and immediately we got our first drenched steel and that'll automatically convert all the drenched steel for us. We're actually running low on shards here for the water. However, the chew jellies you get from force craft slimes will actually smelt into shards. So each one of them will smelt into the individual shards. So that's super useful if you're running low. And now what we want to go ahead and do is actually get our auto smelt pickaxe. Now I have an auto smelt pickaxe already with the enchantment itself. However, the reason I set this up is what I'm going to show you right now is you put these on top of a fire infuser. And what happens is once it's infused with fire, it will give the tagline auto smelt, not the enchantment, but the tagline itself. And you can do this with water to get fortune, I believe. And there's some other ones as well. However, if we take this off, eh, I think now should be fine. Yeah, you see right there, it says in yellow, fire infused, auto smelt affected by fortune. Now that's going to give us auto smelt on a pickaxe, even without the auto smelt enchant. So it's super useful. All right, so now that we got ahead and done that, we can actually start working on the pedestals mod. So it's very simple. Just you need some stone and some andesite alloy. We'll grab ourselves two pedestals because that's what we need today. And we need ourselves a linking tool, material generator, and an import upgrade. All right, so we need to make ourselves some abjuration and conjuration essence. And I think over here should work fine. So we're going to go ahead and set up similar to what we have for our normal essences and just do imbuement chamber on top of oak drawer and then do the oak drawers on top as well. However, these guys here need to be spaced apart by one right. And we're going to use arcane uh, platforms instead of pedestals as 
the pedestals kind of look weird when they're stacked up like that. However, if you do arcane platforms, which you just craft it down, you can place them vertically or horizontally or however you want. So it just looks a lot better in my opinion. And the reason you need that is for the crafting recipe itself. Now the air essences and all that stuff don't actually need crafters. So these guys need to be separated by one block. Otherwise, the imbuement chamber will get conflicted in trying to read the other pedestals around the other side. So to make abjuration essence, we need a stone button, a clock, and some redstone. And these guys aren't consumed in recipes, so all you need to do is just place them on the back on the pedestals like so. Each one like so, right? And if you grab yourself some source gems and place them above, we'll grab some for this guy too. And each one will automate. oh, so yeah, we don't have the stuff on the back for that one yet. But yeah, so this guy here, once it's crafted up, it'll just take a while. It's using this source actually, but we'll move a source jar over for it. So it crafts like easier, right? But we now have our first abjuration or manipulation essence, sorry. And then this guy will just set up our pusher and puller upgrades, similar to what we had before. This guy is set to down. We'll set a pusher upgrade in this one as well. And then we'll do tiller upgrades to go up. And this will make automatic abjuration and conjuration essence. Now for the abjuration essence, you need fermented spider eyes, which we've gotten from our bio diesel setup, sugar, and then milk buckets. So pretty easy. Once again, just come around to the back and place them all on. And this guy will automatically make abjuration essence. However, it doesn't see the source charge, so we're just going to move one over, which we'll have to grab out of this guy just because our this hopper's a little strong. But yeah, so this guy will automatically make the essence and come over here, grab these because we're not going to need them for now at least. We'll need them later in the episode, but we'll just place the source shards down and then these guys will craft a bunch up for us. Oh, and we do need to lock this guy. So to make our linking tool, we need a gold rod, one of each shard, the abjuration, manipulation essences in a bookshelf, right? So we got all that in our inventory and we'll just place down our infested stone from the haunter we got, right? And then this guy will make us living rock. And then we'll grab uh, our essences and we'll put them all on the pedestals around here. Oh, not my pastel. There we go. One of each. And then the gold rod in the middle. Oh, yeah, we do need the source back. <laughs> Luckily, these filled up while we were waiting. And we'll just grab them back out of our storage system. And then these guys should start crafting right away. We'll place these back. We don't need them. And then if we throw the gold rod inside of here, we'll get our linking tool. Oh, look, our living rock's turning into living rock right before our eyes. Awesome. Okay, now to make the import upgrades, we actually need an upgrade base, which is crafted. Well, we need an upgrade base for both of them, right? And the upgrade base is crafted in the imbuement chamber, which needs tallow, redstone, anvil, and the linking tool. Similar to how it was before, they're not consumed, so it's really useful. However, we don't have tallow yet. Now, the way you get tallow is actually you make a butcher's knife and kill an animal. The quest does give it to you, however, I'm just going to show it here. If we just fly over, oh, we're out of mana. We got to replace that. <laughs> so yeah, if we come over here with our butcher's knife and kill a pig, we'll get tallow. Oh, and some animal fat, apparently. But yeah, so now that we have our tallow, we can make our gold upgrades. So if we place down our imbuement chamber and grab some oak planks, just so it looks similar to the other ones, we're not going to automate this with uh, pusher upgrades or anything like that. However, I do need more pedestals or platforms, sorry. We'll grab four of them. And then these guys will do similar to before. We'll stick three on the back, but I'll also stick one on the front for my linking tool, just so we can grab it on and off easily enough, as that is something we'll need. And we don't have two of them at the moment. So we'll stick those three ingredients on the back, our linking tool on the front, and a gold plate in the middle. And if we move some source over here, actually, this will craft a lot faster. So yeah, with two source jars here, this should craft instantly. This only requires 500, and there we go. That's our first one done, and we'll grab a second one. Now, with both upgrade bases, we can actually go ahead and craft ourselves a material generator. However, we do need a constantine plate now to make one of these. Last update, or the most recent update, required, like, change this recipe. However, it also did change our vault recipe. Now, if you remember, I said I wanted to make a bunch of vaults down below. However, now it is required to put an iron chest under two invar plates in this recipe sequence, which I understand, but we only had the one vault, so we're going to have to make it this way later in the future. So for the material generator, we do need the constantine plate. And this requires constantine, which is just nickel and copper in an alloy kiln. And you may be wondering, well, how do you get nickel? 
Well, luckily, wandering traders trade nickel for invar coins, right? So if you just go down here, oh no, it's up here. Okay, so it's just emeralds. Luckily, they're not scamming us of our precious coins. And we should have plenty of emeralds in here. Yeah, we do. So we can go over here, trade for nickel, and then we can just smelt this up in our furnaces and get ourselves Constantine once it's smelted. Now with our Constantine plate, we're just going to grab ourselves some lava and water, which I don't think I have. Yeah, no, I don't have any in our system. So we'll just grab a bucket of lava like so, and then a bucket of water, and we'll be able to make our first material generator. And with our import upgrade, we're good to go to make our pedestals. So now we're just going to grab both our pedestals, place one on top of the andesite block, as well as one on top of our drawer, right? And we're going to put this in our offhand by clicking F or placing it inside the offhand and right clicking on the pedestal. Now, if you right click normally, this wouldn't work. And now this guy needs a tool. So we'll do the same with our pickaxe offhand and automatically it starts making andesite. Now we'll grab our linking tool, shift right click on our export pedestal, and then we'll grab our shift right click on our, Im or our material generator, sorry. And this will automatically grab from the pedestal beside it and put it into the generator, into the drawer below. And if we go ahead and look here, after we turned on our machines, we'll start to get zinc alloys, or sorry, andesite alloys. And if we can just lock the drawer so we don't lose it, now we have andesite alloy on demand. Now next up today is we want to make ourselves our diesel generators, right? I've gone ahead and prepared all the resources ahead of time. And these guys are pretty easy to make, but you do need mechanical crafters. And it's just electron tubes, brass casing, and crafting table. So we can go ahead and make that real quick. We'll just go ahead and make ourselves 12 mechanical crafters here, which is exactly how many we need. Luckily we get three per. And I gotta figure out somewhere to put this, right? It, well, it's gonna be temporary. I'm not gonna keep it here forever. I just need somewhere quickly to craft the diesel generators as I'm going to move a lot of this stuff around. I think right here is probably fine for our mechanical crafters. So we're just going to set up some uh, cog, wheel, cog wheel right here and then place down our drawers. Oh, it overstressed immediately. I guess we'll have to remove some machines. And luckily the configurator actually works as a wrench so we don't have to use our create wrench for everything. And this guy is permanently filled with uh, 24k energy, by the way. So it never needs to be charged, which is super nice. And we'll just place a chest down right here. And we have to figure out how to de-stress our system. I guess I could just remove that for now. Yeah, we'll just remove that guy. And then we can go ahead and start placing down hoppers. Now, this is just a way to easily automate early like crafting, right? I don't need to go ahead and manually place each item in. So if I just place six hoppers on the back like so, oh, not up top, I wanna place it down below. Oh, and it went inside. There we go. And then we'll place six on the front. And the reason we can't do these all in the back because hop the way hoppers work is they push items downwards even if they're connected to an inventory. So we'll just do like this and we'll grab all of the items in the order that I have them placed here because this is how you have to craft. And we'll make sure to keep them like so so we know how to filter our mechanical crafter. And if I just go ahead and place a piston in there, engineering block, piston, and then down here it's brass sheet fluid tank and then brass sheet and then on the back we'll do the same thing piston engineering block piston and then sturdy sheet fluid pipe and sturdy sheet this guy will automatically start to craft each diesel engine and it will automatically be put into this chest awesome okay i've gone ahead and torn down all of my water wheels and built myself a precision mechanism which is super easy to get by the way or sorry i built myself a rotation speed controller and you can get precision mechanisms from wandering traders. So that was super easy. We'll probably snag some more later on. And we'll go and place our six diesel generators down like so. And we'll grab a belt. And we can run this guy. And it'll power all of our machines. Later on, I'm going to set up a pneumatic craft over here. That's why I left this space open to make battle diesel. However, for now, we're just going to manually move this tank over. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And oh, I just lost 2,000 battle diesel. Not the best. But for now, we'll just place the tank down and then place all the mechanical pipes. We don't have a concrete there. And we'll just grab our configuration tool. Where is it? Oh, there it is. And we should just be able to export this automatically into our diesel generators and they'll start running. Now we just realize we have 
12,000 stress units available compared to the 3,500 we had before with water wheels. So if you flick your clutch, your bow diesels, like your diesel generators, won't turn off. So what we have to do is we actually have to run a redstone signal on top of them, just like so. We just put redstone on top and then we'll put a lever, oh, we'll get rid of, put a lever here. Now our diesel generators will stop running. All right, so I've gone ahead and prepared our cake factory for today. I did a lot of trial and error to get this to work as like should work at least. So this is our cake factory. Now it may look a little complicated, so we'll just go over everything one by one and explain it. So the first step in making cakes is actually the cake batter, which requires eggs, sugar, wheat flour, and milk. So we're going to have milk there eventually. We have eggs here and we have sugar there. We have ourselves a logistical sorter on top here, which is really easy to make. It's just the electronic component we made last episode, iron ingots and a piston. And that is so we can get uh, the wheat out because back here on the millstone, it actually produces seeds of the byproducts. So that's why we have the four drawers here. Otherwise, we would just do, I guess, well, we would still need four anyways. However, we can filter out the seeds and that all gets mixed up in the mechanical mixer up here with the milk eventually. And it will be pressed in to make cake bases. So that'll come out the bottom and we can start to smoke them with the fire down here. So the cake basins will come out, go on the, con the conveyor belt here, and then we'll set a filter on this brass funnel here to only accept smelted cake bases. And those will then go into this chest and now out this andesite funnel on this side. And then once they go along the belt, they will get iced by the spout. And the icing is made with sugar, sweet berries, and milk, which we don't have automated. And then I'll make a cake. So back here, we have a similar setup. We're going to have milk in this drawer here. And then we'll have sugar and sweet berries to make our icing, which is very simple. However, you can also do chocolate with cocoa beans instead of sweet berries, but it requires the basin itself to be heated. So we're just going to go with a regular icing. So to actually get the milk for our mixers, we're going to use cows in a jar, which is simple. All you have to do is squish a cow with an anvil and that will provide us with all the milk we need for our recipes. Obviously, sugar isn't a problem as we have quite a bit from apotheosis and then sweet berries and the wheat we need for our millstone over here, we'll just get by bone meal. So just to show this off here, we have a cow on top of a jar and we'll squish it with an anvil. I promise it's humane. And now we have a cow in a jar and this will automatically produce some milk for us. So if we come down below here, below our drawer, what we're going to do is stick a mechanical pipe and then set that to extract out of the jar. See, it's filling up with milk passively and we'll just set that to extract. And now our fluid drawer will have milk in it infinitely. And we'll do that for the second one back there as well. Now to get our sugar cane for our sugar for our sugar cane, we're going to go ahead and break these finally. I think these things are like 200 and blocks tall or something at this point if it goes to world height. So it might cause a bit of FPS lag, but these guys are just going to rain down from the sky. Oh wow, it's just a, it's a sugar cane rain. It's kind of beautiful in a way. Okay, I've gone ahead and filled up our drawers with sugar and some eggs. We'll go ahead and extract them now. And this should automatically fill this guy up here. Oh, don't want to do that. We should lock the drawer. There we go. I promised these chickens here, by the way, very humane of me to do this. They, they enjoy their life. I just got some seeds from our wheat, by the way. And I just spammed a bunch of eggs. And I forced them to grow with the seeds because you can change the timer. We'll just go ahead and block them in fully. And now I want to go ahead and set a filter so it only pulls out the eggs, sugar, and uh, wheat or whatever it is, the meal, right? So let's we'll go to item stack, place the wheat flour in there. Set a new filter, sugar, and then item stack egg. And this guy will automatically, as you see, it'll fill up as much as it can. It should automatically, there we go. I was going to say, it'll automatically fill them up. And you can actually set this to round robin. Yeah. And we'll do single stack only, just so it only sends one at a time. And this will automatically fill it up with everything eventually. Oh, we don't have any wheat flour. Here, I'll chuck that in. There we go. But yeah, so this will automatically fill it up. And now we'll just need to put our milk in there. So we'll do the same thing back here. We'll automatically send our sugar and uh, sweet bears up. This guy does need to filter. So we'll send our milk as well on both sides. And now everything should be good to go. So let's test it out. I haven't tested this yet. We're going to turn on our diesel machines and see what happens. And this is using, oh, we still have 4,200 left. That's not bad. Okay. Is it working? Okay, it's not working. 
Why not? Oh, no, it is. Wait, why isn't it working? Oh, you need to compact this. Okay, we're gonna see what we can do here. Okay, so we just gotta press it up here. I just gotta connect it to a rotational force. So I'll just grab some shafts back here and then connect it up with the belt. Just go ahead and cover that up and it should be working now. Awesome. Oh, wait, wait, it's making... Oh, it's not smelting them. We forgot to set the filter. Okay, I manually smoked one. Now, if this works what's not oh it doesn't have enough eggs there we go so this should automatically wait there we go awesome so it's not only going to accept smoked cakes or baked cakes i guess and once it smelts it goes through and it gets iced and now we have a cake so we're just going to go ahead and manually smoke all the cakes that we made messed up initially and we can just throw them in the chest over here and this should automatically work from now on so yeah that is our cake factory it is not the most compact ever. It definitely could be like better. I'm probably going to fill in the rest with concrete here just so it looks a bit nicer, but I won't try to hide all the great stuff. But yeah, our cake factory is done and it actually works. So that's great. So now that we have our cakes, we can actually make ourselves our Kekka Morris, which is pretty simple. It's this is how we're going to generate all of our mana. And basically what this guy does is it just cakes. So you feed it cakes out on the ground and it will just eat them. So what we're going to do is place a soul powder, two white petals, two orange petals, two brown, a cake. And then all we have to do is toss our seed in and we automatically get a cake of Mars. So we'll just repeat the process three more times and we'll have ourselves four cake flowers to fill our bellies. <laughs> so to automatically farm our cakes, we're going to use a block placer and we're going to just set it to always on. And then down here, what we're going to do is we have our ender chest, which is red, white, and red, which is the color coding of the cake, I guess. And we'll just set this guy to extract, and it should automatically place the cakes above. Awesome. And what we'll do is we'll place our kekamorses around here. Uh, yeah, we'll go in a four pattern around it, like a little plus sign. And these guys will start automatically eating the cake, as you see here, because they have an internal mana buffer of 9,000 each. So these guys will fill up. However, they won't have anywhere to put it just yet. So what we're gonna have to do next is make ourselves a mana pool. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is make our mana pool, which is a steel plate, one of each essence, a sprinkle shard, which we just made, and then the living rock. And that eats up 7,500 mana or source, sorry. But that should make us a mana pool. And we do want four of them because we're gonna make ourselves a mana spreader, or sorry, a mana splitter. And this will fill four pools at once rather than just one. So that's going to be our method of filling up mana. So we'll just go ahead and make four more, three more of these. Okay, and that's our last one. And now we want to make ourselves our mana spreaders, which is just abjuration essence, six logs, and a source relay in the middle. And this doesn't eat up as much mana, I don't think, but we should grab some more just in case because these are pretty much empty. Okay, we grabbed two more mana jars. So we'll just go ahead and make this again. And we're gonna make four of these total to match our four Kekamorises. So I went ahead and made two mana steel plates, which we got mana steel from the Cataclysm dungeon. And I don't feel bad using it now as we're going to have mana steel in a second here anyways. So I went ahead and made our mana splitter. This will split the mana evenly into four different pools. So each Kekamoris will basically fill a single mana pool each However, we're just going to do it this way. I think having four spreaders is unnecessary. Oh, we do need a wand, but that's not how you make sticks. How is it? Three, I think? No. Two? Oh, no, it's two. Okay, yeah. I could have made that in my inventory. But yeah, we need three sticks and then three petals, or two petals, sorry. And I guess we'll go with white and orange. Yeah, that works. And we'll just do three sticks like that, get ourselves a wand of the forest. And we can go over here and connect all of our spreaders to this mana splitter in the middle, like so. And then these guys will slowly start filling up the mana pools and our cakes will be eaten. And each one of these will just fill up the mana pool completely. While we're AFK on our island, we don't need any more than that. I think four is fine for now. Later on, we'll probably have a much bigger cake production or different generating flowers. I'm not entirely sure. However, that's gonna wrap up today's episode. I know it was a long one. We did a lot of stuff today from generating cake to making mana to our pedestals. We did a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video. If you don't want to miss anything else in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you learned something or you want to teach me something, 
leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!